Did we just see the potential winners of Euro 2020 as Belgium ran riot over Russia? We'll take a little look next. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. This time looking back at Belgium's opening up. Oh, that's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. This time looking back at Black. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. Looking back at Black. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. Looking back at Belgium's runaway victory against the Roshkis over in Russia. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe and keep your bag out today. With all things Euro 2020 related, Black and Rovers related, World Football related, we got it all here. Under one Ruski, that's right, of course. The drama out of Group B was earlier. And hopefully we're on the back, the, the back end of that now. But of course, the goals and of course, the flair was over in Russia as Belgium ran right over Russia, of course. I'll get that in a minute. Of course, big, big shout out the VIPs, they are the patrons of course boys and girls, again if you're new, smash your subscribe we're trying to get up to 20,000 subscribers and we're ever so close, so let's get cracking and have a little look then shall we so here we go, a bit of a recap of the game, of course did take place earlier today which was of course Saturday the 12th of June, 3-0 win in the end, Lukaku up that was scoring on the 10th minute, absolutely clinical and of course dedicated the goal to Christian Eriksen a so big, big shout out to, to, to Romelu Lukaku for that. I think but uh, Belgium didn't even get out of second gear today. They were that good. A lot of their key players not even involved. De Bruyne not involved. Uh, Hazard not involved. Witzel not involved as well. So a chance for the French players, especially in midfield, to kind of get a hold of it. And to be fair, I don't think they really did. I don't think the, the Belgians, even though the scoreline kind of flatters Belgium and, and, and the stats flatter Belgium, I think they could have been much, much more clinical than this. And if we had De Bruyne, if we had Hazard... It could have been maybe even a cricket score, like 6-0 or something like that. Russia were absolutely dreadful. 66% uh, possession for the Belgians, 34% for Russia. Of course, no, don't let me, don't let me kind of write off Russia completely. They did show some uh, attacking Vega, just trying to make it a little bit competitive. But Belgium were once, uh, like two or three, four steps ahead of these guys, uh, quality-wise. Uh, of course, Lukaku scored the first goal. He also scored the last goal in the 80th minute. And then sandwiched in between that was, of course, Thomas Munier's goal on the 34th minute. Of course, he was a substitution for Castagna, who got himself substituted. We'll talk about the lineups in a minute. Uh, we had nine shots uh, for, uh, for the Belgians. That's right. Four of them were on target. Three off target. Two were blocked. That's right. Meanwhile, the Russians got five shots on the day. Uh, three of them off target. Two on target. And one shot was saved. Uh, corners, four to two in favour of the Russians. But, of course, they didn't really make, make much out of it. Ten free kicks to eight for the Russians. And of course, nine fouls to 11. Uh, four off sides. That's right. So, yeah, Belgium looked completely... In class, and again, the the I think so far the performance of the tournament. What one? No questions asked. Of course, Italy did did a number on Turkey. Belgium have done a, a number on Russia. And again, you would think the Italy result, the Belgium result, you would expect them to win. And I think Russia. Yes, they're going to be down in the dumps with the scoreline. It's not going to be uh, uh, way way too favourable in, in the in the standings at the end of this. But they've got to bounce back. They've, they they can take on the Finlands. They can they can give the Danes a, a run for the money. And of course, Denmark already having a bit of a a, a tough match to respond against with the next time around. So. It's not doom and gloom yet. The Russians still have a chance, but Belgium already one step through to the next stages, of course. Let's take a look at the, the shot grid here. Uh, the blue is Russia. Of course, the orange is Belgium. That's good. It does go correspond with the flags for a change. As you can see, very, very sporadic from the Russians. The Belgians, again, could have had more and probably should have had more, again, with better with better delivery in the box. Of course, this is the heat map. So as you can see, the Belgium's all over the place. Uh, a lot of the ball, a lot of ball retention, Martinez. Maybe the team is too better than the manager, perhaps. I think with a better manager, Belgium should be kind of like kind of like England as well, in a way. It's kind of like England that the team, the personnel that Belgium have, they should be dominating this game for a good portion of time. They've not had the manager prior to Martinez. They've not really got there with Martinez. I think if they had the, the right face to the place, I don't know who that could be, but a, a different guy pulling the strings out, out, from the dugout. Belgians should be running away with world football alongside the French. I don't think the French have got the right manager for the job. I don't think England have got the right manager for the job. I don't think Belgium have got the right manager for the job. I think Germany will have the right manager for their job. But I think Belgium need to bring somebody in. Somebody that could that could use this personnel to bring up, to, to make not just Belgium good. Martinez is, is making Belgium good. But I want to make I want to see Belgium being phenomenal. They should be phenomenal with the with the personnel that they have. As for Russia, as of course the heat map here, a bit sporadic. Uh, of course, the, the leading man up top, 
Uh, I can't remember his name. We'll see it in a minute. But of course, this is how they played. Of course, quick look at the lineups here before I give you my match review and match ratings. Uh, Courtois between the six for the Belgians. Vertonghen, Boyata, and Adelrado at the back. Hazard, Tielmans, Lind, uh, Dundanocker, and Castagna, of course, for the inner short interim. Of course, he was substituted. Uh, Carasso, uh, Lukaku, and Dries Mertens up top. Of course, as for the Russians, Schoenen between the sticks. Should have showed up, brother. Fernandez, Semenov, Tzinka, and Surkov at the back. Uh, Baranov and Ogzadov in midfield with, uh, with Juzef, or Kuzev, Golovin, Zod and Zugba up top. Uh, much older, or a little bit older anyway, uh, the Russians than the, than the Belgians. As for my match ratings, well, here we go. Take a little look at it then, shall, shall we? Courtois with a five. He absolutely had nothing to do. Of course, Vertonghen with a six. Adorai with a six. Of course, Boyana with a six as well. Again, not much to be done with, of course, the back line. Dundanocker with a six as well. Timbers with a seven. Castani with a five. Unfortunately, he only had a bit part of the game. Uh, we had Hazard with a seven. Carasso with a seven. Mertens with a seven. Of course, Lukaku with a nine. Uh, tremendous performance, as you see down here. Uh, all the incidents predominantly happened in the first half, but of course, a bit of drama at the end of it. Here are the Russians, of course, their match ratings for you. Shinny with a five, uh, Zakara with a four, Sevenov with a five, Shoko with a five, Fernandes with a five. That back four was shit. Uh, Dimitri Baranov with a six, Ozanov with a six, Zobnin with a, a five, Kuziev with a six, Glowin with a five, and uh, Zugba with a six. I thought he did okay on his lonesome, uh, of course, at the tip at the top. Meanwhile, the substitutions were looking like this. We did see some minutes from Vermaelen, of course, 35 years old these days. Uh, Munier, of course, came on and uh, got himself an assist and a goal, I think. I think uh, Pratt as well and Eden Hazard did come on for a little bit uh, to kind of change it up. As for the Russians, we did see a bit of action from Dayev, uh, Kaladev, uh, Mukin, the youngster, 19 years of old, Medichuk, uh, one of them anyway, and uh, Cheryshev came on for a little bit, but he was on and off. He was substituted. There was a bit of a collision uh, in the first half, so he did play some minutes, but then he was substituted a little bit later on. Meanwhile, on, on social media, let's take a little look then, shall we? Of course, uh, Mirio Karaj said, no, a fair result would have been 5 0 in response to the 3 0 win. Uh, meanwhile, Mac, aka Osborne, a 0 0 0 0 0 Lukaku on course to win the Golden Boot already. Uh, Radib Shadukin was said, well done, boys, indeed. Meanwhile, Eaton, Jose de Lima said, Belgium completely dominated the game. 3 0 an expressive debut in Euro. Uh, and he's got a, bit, a couple of hashtags in there. Dr. Stemi said, the man, thumbs up, thumbs up to Lukaku. We've also got Tessa, uh, did what had to be done, indeed. And Oli Tamami also said congratulations in advance, already indicating that maybe, just maybe, they're going to go all the way. But maybe they can go all the way because they are top of the group at the moment at the, uh, with Group B, as you can see right here, right now. Of course, Finland also joined them with that sneaky, be uh, sneaky beaky uh, win as well. As for uh, the uh, Danes and Russians, because they've got a lot of work to do to get themselves out of the group stages. But again, one win and you're pretty much in. So the Finns, the Belgians, probably one step into that next round. Of course, we'll see how uh, how they all pan out at the end of it. Of course, uh, uh, Belgium take on Denmark next. That's on Thursday. And, of course, they'll wrap it up up against uh, the Rushies uh, on uh, the 21st of June. Meanwhile... What am I doing here? What am I lock what am I looking at here? This is wrong. A quick look at the group then, of course, to see Belgium and Finland running away with it at the moment with, of course, three points out of three. Uh, Denmark and Russia got it all to do as they try to get themselves back into consideration. Of course, the Danes will take on Belgium next. That'll be on Thursday, the 17th of June, before they wrap it up, up against Finland on Monday, the 21st. As for the Rushkies, they take on Finland next. That's on Wednesday, the 16th of June, midweek. Uh, we will probably watch that game and, of course, wrap up it up against the Danes on Monday, the 21st of June. One win and you're probably in of course the next round but that's it my friends that is it group b comes to a close and so does match day number two a lot of drama a lot to take in a lot to di 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 divulge in the end but fortunately it looks like ericsson is on the mend fingers crossed and hopefully we'll, we'll get more more uh, words from that as for belgium look very very good today of course just like the italians putting down a statement of intent early doors for maybe maybe your favorites for the title but what about what about you guys what do you think so far after two days adding euros let me know in your in your opinion down in the comment section down below of course can belgium go all the way can Italy stop them of course what about this group is it wide open can the Finns get through to the next stages of course that match to number two is going to be massive out in group B and I'll see you soon there of course make sure you bang the thumbs up bang the subscribe hit the little bell check out the description on Twitter Twitch Facebook and of course Patreon as well until then I am out